forces on land, on sea, and in the air. This complex task requires automatic position correlation among combat elements so accurate that there is no error in designating targets even in close proximity to friendly forces. Complementing this ability to determine position accurately and unambiguously, position and other combat essential information must be reportable in real time to tie together execution elements in the battle area and to establish information exchange between the execution and command elements. The tactical situation must be presented to planners through the information distribution system accurately, reliably, and immediately so that they in turn can coordinate land, sea, and air forces in real time and take advantage of opportunity as it arises. That means getting information selectively and immediately from whoever has it to whoever needs it in a system that will not bog down even under the heaviest use. For about 20 years, a series of technological developments have been converging to make this possible. And for the last decade, the Navy and the Air Force have been working to make it a reality. The Air Force has developed a system making possible decisively improved distribution of tactical information while the Navy has been developing a precise position, location, and navigation system called ITINS, Integrated Tactical Navigation System. It will permit a degree of tactical flexibility beyond anything that is possible today. Each service's programs have contained some elements of the other's interests. The Navy has also been developing information distribution concepts, while the Air Force program has dealt also with position, location, and navigation. Two systems, one purpose. In 1975, the two programs were merged with Joint Program Office Headquarters at Hanscom Air Force Base in Bedford, Massachusetts. Here, the long, careful development is paying off in a system which will be fielded within a few years. It is called the Joint Tactical Information Distribution System, JTID. The Navy's ITIN system, one source of the JTID's design, is part of a long-range system concept called ITACS, the Integrated Tactical Air Control System. ITACS was designed to be secure, jam-resistant, and to interoperate with existing and planned CNI, communication, navigation, and identification systems. The I-10 stage of the program is devoted to fielding a highly accurate position, location, and navigation system. Navigation is basically the ability to move with continual knowledge of one's position in time and space with reference to established standards. Today's navigation systems suffer from lack of what is called a common grid, a unilateral standard of position and common time. ITINS uses a common local time source and propagates accurately timed short radio messages to calibrate time throughout the system. Here is how ITINS works. The grid controller defines a grid in which his position is located and provides a north reference. Later position fixes refine further the grid's accuracy. Within this grid, ITINS provides precise navigation to its community of users. Targets are accurately referenced for every participant, and each participant transmits his own position and status into the common grid while in active mode. Any user in passive mode can operate within the grid, receive data from active participants, and maintain position relative to the grid through the transmissions he receives. ITIN's communications are of such high frequency that they are limited to line-of-sight paths. Hence, for over-the-horizon distances, a relay is required. Airborne participants provide one automatically. Simultaneous two-way target reporting, vectoring, and other message transmissions between subscribers can be provided by the ITIN's messages in a data link mode of operation. Recently, the operational potential of ITINs was tested aboard the USS Guam 
using two helicopters. The ship's combat information center exercised positive control over the helicopters in Sonoboy interrogation and other anti-submarine warfare maneuvers. The Guam exercise demonstrated ITIN's capability for relative navigation, position determination, accurate target reporting, over-the-horizon relay, and potential for other cooperative tactics such as quiet ship and target handoff. ITIN's equipment used included a basic pilot's display enabling the crew to read range, bearing, and steering to any of 10 targets stored in common grid coordinates. A similar remote display, along with a computer entry panel, was installed at the sensor operator station where ITIN's operational modes were monitored and controlled. On operator command, target and Sonoboy coordinates were transmitted automatically over the ITIN's data link to the ship. Another ITIN station was operated from a van on the deck, and a display, identical to those in the helicopters, was provided in the combat information center where the tactical plot was maintained in the common grid. The integrated tactical navigation system concept provides tactical mission potential never before realized. Some of this potential has been successfully demonstrated in deep ocean operations independent from all other man-made navigational aids. In the meantime, the Air Force has been addressing information distribution in the tactical theater in the program called Seek Bus, the second half of the joint program that, with ITINs, has become the Joint Tactical Information Distribution System. This Seek Bus system, designed to support an entire tactical air control system, is a high-capacity, secure, jam-protected digital capability designed to get information from those who have it to those who need it in a way that will dramatically increase tactical military effectiveness. Seek bus alters the form of the standard communication system in such a way that any user can select by category from among all the information that is collectively known at all points in the system. Surveillance data, deployed elements location and status, assignments and commands. SeekBus was designed to provide reliable, automatic information exchange among up to 1,000 air and surface elements of a tactical air control system over an area approximately 600 miles in diameter. The process begins with automatic reporting of routine data from deployed units, data such as aircraft position, velocity, ordnance and fuel status, aircraft type, and so forth. This data is digitally transmitted in individual time slots, which recur for each unit. The capacity of one net will allow up to 1,000 units to report every 10 seconds. Reporting rates can be varied, and multiple nets can be used independently, each for a different support function. The system is synchronized using simple crystal oscillators to create a highly accurate time standard for all users. Users throughout the system automatically select information they need by means of receiver codes using an onboard mini computer to filter for appropriate data and display it on screens in the cockpit or in ground centers, providing all elements subsets of the same information. Commands and acknowledgments are also exchanged directly with the capability of extending full connectivity to all participants. Since all participants have access to all data, subordinate commands can take over command and control functions in case of station failure or knockout without loss of continuity or net restructure. This means very high survivability. And since all participants have access to all data, a submarine assigned as a participant can covertly monitor the data, fix himself in the relative grid, update his database, and thus become a silent, knowing partner. Spread spectrum signal structure makes Seek bus both secure and jam resistant. The system's precise timing makes these features integral and inexpensive and supports the relative navigation capability developed in the ITINS program. Spread spectrum modulation drastically reduces the effectiveness of jammers. 
With conventional modulation, a jammer can blanket the transmissions of a transmitter of equal power so that this transmitter's digital messages can only be received at a rate of less than 1% errors within the area shown in green. By contrast, spread spectrum modulation restricts the same jammer's effectiveness to the area shown in red, a small area near the jammer's transmission source. At the same time, the enemy will have greater difficulty intercepting the signal and answer to the requirement for LPI, systems which are low in probability of interception. SeekBus establishes aircraft position and status using this information to identify friendlies. Not only friendly, but enemy position and identity become part of the situation display as surveillance reports go into the data pool, where they become part of the data used for control and coordination of combat operations. With data available immediately to all force elements, opportunities and threats can be identified soon enough for rapid, confident action to be taken. What you have just seen illustrates the way in which a JTID's capability can combine with an advanced airborne sensor, such as the E3A Airborne Warning and Control System, which will detect and report low-flying aircraft and surface ships beyond line of sight of surface sensors. When the E3A joins our military arsenal in the early 1980s, JTIDS will be aboard as the data link enabling the E3A to interoperate with other aircraft and with ground weapons, surveillance, and command systems, even under severe enemy electronic countermeasures. In a series of tests in the European NATO environment, Seek bus equipment was taken from the laboratory to provide an air-to-ground link between the E3A and the diverse ground defenses currently operating in Europe. The exercise began in England, matching the wide area surveillance of the E3A with the command, control, surveillance, and weapons capabilities of England's linesman system. The E3A's unique look-down capability was augmented by the information distribution capability of Seek Bus to make available improved and extended warning and control for European defense. An airborne relay was used to extend the information link over distances of three to five hundred miles, hurtling the Alps in the process. In full operation, combining position location and status reporting, the JTID system will build on such capability to produce a comprehensive, immediate tactical situation display which can be used to assess resources, decide on courses of action, and navigate aircraft and vessels to destination. The demonstration showed how easily JTIDs will interoperate with systems in the field, many of which have never shared common data before. These laboratory units were, in effect, adaptable interface terminals. The four Seek bus trailers were airlifted from location to location around Western Europe, setting up data link interfaces with operational centers of major air defense systems in a matter of hours. Here it is in West Germany, establishing interface with the 412L Air Weapons Control System. Through the partnership of the E3A and Seek bus, not only were targets tracked, but fighter aircraft were vectored against them with the full cooperation of the NATO member systems, such as the 485L Tactical Air Control System, Hawk Missile System, the NATO Air Defense System, and the various national systems, among them the French Strida II system. E3A tracks were used at various ground bases to support local missions. Throughout the demonstration, the E3A enabled stations of various systems all over Europe to monitor and act on the identical set of data. From land, the operations moved to a maritime setting for over-the-water exercises. An experimental seat bus van was put aboard the missile cruiser Wainwright at Naples, Italy, and sailed off northern Sicily in a simulated low-level attack mission involving the E3A and the aircraft off the carrier Forrestal. The E-3A radar picture was distributed to the Wainwright, 
where the seek bus messages were translated into the Naval Tactical Data System and retransmitted to the Forrestal to provide wide area coupling of the E-3A into low-level fleet defense. First implementation of JTIDs is very near. Initial production terminals for installation and priority elements will be available in 1979, with production units for aircraft shortly thereafter. It is a proven system, its concept demonstrated, and its capability tested repeatedly in large-scale practical demonstrations. JTIDs will give the services high-capacity, garble-free, secure, jam-protected, versatile communications which bring together the twin functions of position location and information distribution. It is the new backbone of military communications, creating interoperation among existing CNI systems and producing highly accurate relative navigation. At sea, it will improve fleet operations, fleet defense, all activity which depends on guidance of aircraft, knowledge of force status, or effective surveillance of enemy activity giving each element the information it needs to do its job in time, based on a single, force-wide pool of common data. In the air and over land, it will create an information and navigational environment within which each deployed element of a tactical force can take the best action to accomplish the mission based on the right information in the right place at the right time. JTIDS is the means by which the extremely high capability of today's command, control, weapons, surveillance, and support systems can be blended into a single, flexible, selectively responsive team, all acting on the best information, all moving within a common navigational grid so as to enable the maximum operational effectiveness of our combined tactical weapons systems. <laughs>